everyone, and welcome to tonight's event. I'm Em. I'm the Adult Programs Coordinator here at Rockland Public Library, and we're so thrilled to be hosting tonight's event. Um, first up, before we get started, a piece of housekeeping. Um, those of us joining on Zoom, please make sure to keep your camera and microphone off for the duration of the event. And then if you have any questions or comments for Martha, you can type them into the chat throughout, and then we'll address them towards the end, and I'll read them aloud for Martha. Um, to those of us joining in person, also welcome. And I want to list the next couple events that are coming up at the library in the next couple weeks. Uh, next Thursday, the 22nd at 6 p.m., we're actually going to be hosting a reading room concert upstairs with Jim Tolls. Uh, he's from Owl's Head, and he'll mark his 60th year of musical gigs with a concert in the library's reading room. He has played bluegrass, folk, country rock, country, and contra dance music. He has participated as a vocalist, instrumentist, and writer on various albums. Um, he'll be appearing solo, singing, and playing fiddle with a recorded backing tracks that feature his own vocals and instrumental work. Uh, I've seen Jim's work before. Uh, he's a thriving member of the uh, Rockland uh, Shakespeare Society, and he does a really phenomenal job with them. Uh, so I really encourage anyone to come visit us uh, next week at 6 p.m. in the reading room. And then the following week, uh, the 29th at 6 p.m. in the community room and via Zoom, we're going to be hosting a documentary screening from POV, Brief Tender Light. Um, an MIT alum follows four African students at his alma mater as they strive to become agents of change for their home countries. Over an intimate, nearly decade-long journey, all must, decide of, uh, all must decide how much of America to absorb, how much of Africa to hold on to, and how to reconcile teenage ideals with the truth they discover about the world and themselves. Uh, so you can email me for Zoom links for that. It does say in the brochure that it's at 2 o'clock. It's not. It's at 6 p.m. Uh, so you can join us in the community room or via Zoom for that. And I think that that is it from me. So I'm going to introduce tonight's speaker. Martha Piscuskus is um, program director at the Maine Arts Commission and was previously the director of arts education there. She is a visual artist who brings over 30 years of nonprofit organizational leadership alongside a deep understanding of Maine's communities and culture. Before joining the Maine Arts Commission in 2019, she was executive director at Waterfall Arts, a community arts center in Belfast that she co-founded in 2000. So a warm welcome to Martha and thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Em. Um, so my mom was a librarian, I was telling Em, and I grew up in libraries. So I'm very comfortable with the mazes that they all have in them. Um, so thank you for coming, and I've invited a couple of people. Is Amanda here? Okay, great. So half the audience are people I invited <laughs> um, to, to who have received grants from the Maine Arts Commission, and I thought it might be useful for people to hear about that process in case you might be interested. Um, okay, so... Um, Yes, I have, I've worked at the Maine Arts Commission for four years. Um, our mission, I'm going to pull this up here so you know who I'm talking to. Uh, we encourage public interest and participation in the cultural heritage and artistic expression in our state, which is a huge, daunting mission. Um, this presentation, I'm just going to try to give you a, um, a snapshot of the kinds of things that we do and how we partner with others to better leverage our impact. Um, and so how are we funded? You, <laughs> if you pay taxes, you help make this all possible. Um, the NEA gives money to all um, states and territories and then um, the state or territory is expected to match that. So we get, so our total budget is about 2 million. So NEA is 46% of that. State funds is 56, 54% of that. And um, you can see that uh, we are ranked 36 out of 50 in terms of how much we spend per capita on the arts. It's not very much. 76 cents. Some of the states are $10 per capita, some are $2 per capita. Um, we are, have room to grow. And as you can see, some are less than that too. Um, but we're very grateful for what we have. And 
Um, so what is it and what do we do? So th the commission is appointed by the governor and this picture I superimposed on an outside picture and we just met with the governor this week. <laughs> so um, that's a recent photo. And um, the governor appoints the, the commissioners who are sort of like our board. And so right now there's maybe a dozen or 14 or 15 people on the commission. And we have eight and a half staff members who carry out the work. Um, and the two million that we get every year is, is redistributed to the field in these ways, as you can see. So operations is 24%, 38% um, is programming that we do, and 38% is grants out into the field. So one of the things that we get to do is to advocate with state government. Here is our, um, our interim director, Julie Horn. She presented to the Education and Cultural Affairs Committee to the legislature already this year and uh, talk, you know, advocating for infrastructure for funding around policy. Um, we are part of the Cultural Affairs Council. The state has a number of cultural agencies like the Maine State Library, the museum, Maine Archives, um, Maine Humanities Council, Historic Preservation. So we meet, the, our executive directors meet regularly and um, try to work, you know, work together and support each other. We provide information and technical assistance to the field in a lot of different ways. Um, here's our grants manager, Eli Cabana, speaking informally to a group at Creative Portland this winter. Um, this talk I'm giving right now is another example. Um, we also offer feedback on proposals, help artists connect to audiences and vice versa, help artists connect to each other. Um, and we all, all of us, um, provide that. We get out into the field and meet people and promote what's happening. Uh, this image, for example, is in Lewiston. It's one of, um, we're in front of a mural. They have sort of a growing effort to have more public art. This is a mural by Arlen Graf, who's Brazilian. And he said, the meaning behind the zebra is community. Zebras are rarely alone, they live and work in communities. The mural represents the coming together of the growing immigrant community in, in Lewiston, Auburn, with a community of mostly white natives. And this was a year and a half ago that we met with the uh, mayor, Carl Shaleen, and about a dozen arts organizations throughout the city. Throughout the day, they really whirlwinded us around, and it was great. And now we know those people and have relationships with them and can help them connect with other folks around the state. So that's another thing that we do, and we, and we promote all kinds of things on our social media. And a newsletter, we have a regular newsletter. We give grants. In the last five years, we've given a million and a half to uh, organizations, 250 grants to organizations. And in the last five years, we've given over five hundred thousand dollars to uh, 275 grants to individual artists all over the state um, there are some of the more rural counties like Somerset and Piscataquis that haven't had as many applications and we are working now to do more outreach in our more rural areas to bring those numbers up as well as underserved populations and we partner, we do a lot of partnering. Uh, this image is from our veteran arts ceremony. It's a part of our Arts in the Capital program. And we partnered with the um, Maine Veterans Affairs and TOGAS, but also this organization called Quilts of Valor. And they make a quilt for any veteran that hasn't had one. It's a national organization and this is the Maine person, the, the woman in red, and um, so for a couple of years now, she's made a quilt for all the veteran artists that we show in our show at the, at the Capitol, and the 
it's a ceremony they each get their quilt and it's just it's just really lovely um, other partners are the National Endowment for the Arts the New England Foundation for the Arts the Maine Humanities Council the Maine Craft Association Arts um, Maine Alliance for Arts Education Maine Writers and Publishers Maine Community Foundation lots of other lots of other partners and we just published a strategic plan that we started working on pre-pandemic. It got way slowed down because of COVID. But we met with, we had 11 community conversations, over 200 people were involved. And um, it was a commission and staff joint effort. So the strategic plan, it, um, there's four areas of our work that serve under service, connecting, funding, and advancing. And, I will say that partnering is a part of every, practically everything we are doing. So programs, what, is our, what do our programs look like? So this person, this is Genoa Bailey, who is a wonderful um, performer. He was a um, performing arts fellow um, from 2020, and he's performing at another one of our programs, Poetry Out Loud. Who here knows about Poetry Out Loud? Anybody? A couple people. Um, it's a recitation. It's a um, program that is in partnership with the National Endowment for the Arts and the National Poetry Foundation, where students pick poems that have been about 500, 1,500 poems have been already selected, pre selected, and they pick them and, and then they recite them, and it's a competition, and it goes to the, na there's a nationals. Um, and we are in the midst of that right now. We just had our two regionals. We're going to have our final in March. And it's just wonderful to see the young people be very invested in their in the poems. And um, so this was just an example of, an, of one of our programs, uh, Percent for Art. I'm just picking a couple here to talk about. Is a, um, it's a legislated program that any publicly funded construction or renovation project like a, like a library, like schools, like federal buildings, like courthouses, um, has to set aside a certain amount of money for public art. And we administer that selection process. Uh, so that's for, right now I'm, I'm managing one at the University of Maine at Fort Kent. They built a new building and so a certain amount of money is set aside. And, we're in that we're in that process right now. So as you can see, there's a bunch of different programs that we do. Uh, Creative Ground, you might want to know about, is a directory, um, New England wide directory of all arts and culture entities, individuals, businesses, organizations that we point people to. It's kind of a cheap way to have a web presence if you don't, um, and um, it's something that we are working to embed on our website. Lots of partnerships in here. Um, we can talk about them if you have any questions. And I'm done with this. And I just wanted to make sure we have a minute. I've asked folks who have um, received grants to talk a little bit. And somebody has to leave at 7. So um, we can come back to this slide if you have more questions. So more about the grants. So this person is Ebenezer Akakpo, who is a, um, a jeweler and an engineer. And we funded this project, which is run by Creative Portland. And they put out a call to create creative bus shelters in Portland. And this is one of them. And so he was able to take his um, uh, Ghanaian designs um, to a much larger level and made this beautiful bus shelter, for instance. And that, I don't know if you are aware of this, but um, through voting, um, this was voted the best bus stop in the country on a Streets Blog USA 2022. <laughs> he spoke at the, at the Wayfinder talk, yeah. That was pretty exciting. That's the night that he found out that he won. So we give individual artist grants, um, artist project grant, a springboard grant for people who have never gotten a grant from us before. It's tried to be very streamlined. Fellowships, 
uh, every year in various disciplines. Those are $5,000. We just had a tea with the governor, with the fellows from last year and the fellows coming in this year. It was That's where that photo came from. It's really lovely. We have craft apprenticeships and traditional art apprenticeships for individuals. For organizations, general operations, but you know, you don't have to explain. You just, it's an application. This is what we do. This is our budget. And they're all competitive. Um, we try to keep uh, our funding somewhere between around 35 and 40 percent of applicants get funded. Um, sometimes that goes up and down. It depends on, on which of the um, grant there people are applying for. Project-based grant from organizations. We have a collaboration with the Arts and Humanities Council, and, and that's for projects in the community that in, uh, are, are a crossover between an arts experience and a humanities experience, you know, something literary. Oh, went backwards. And Ticket to Ride is just a way for field trips to happen. It's just for transportation. It's $400. And schools have to apply for that. Um, so I was just going to talk about how to get in to do grants um, just quickly. Um, you have to um, register, you know, get in an account, and it's very easy to do. It's free, and then you can list yourself. You can list um, um, press releases, any events that are coming up. You can list a job opening or an art call through there. But in order to access our grants management system, in order to apply, you have to do that. And that's that's our that's our landing page website image there. And then you could pick the Artist Project Grant. This is that, that page there. And um, lots of helpful documents over here. This is the grant guidelines. This is what that looks like, trying to be super um, accessible. And when you're, if you're ready to apply, then you just click on this button here, and you get into the system. And hopefully, it's pretty easy, and you'll talk to some people about that. Here's the timeline um, for this particular grant. We engage about almost 100 people throughout the year to help review our uh, grants. We don't decide on them. We get peer, they're peer reviewed by people around the state. And um, they um, read them, review them, score them, and then we present that to, present the whole process to the Maine Arts Commission mission, <laughs> and the whole process gets approved, and then we issue the checks after that. And everyone's supposed to submit a final report. I can talk more about that process, but I do want, so there's other grants that are given for the arts, not so many for individuals, but um, they're out there. They're out there in Maine, and we can help people do so that. Please do give to the arts, <laughs> attend all kinds of events. And if you are someone who is an individual artist or works for an arts or cultural organization, invite your elected officials to an event. Um, that's the only way they're going to get to know more about what's actually happening. Uh, and advocate in your community if there's something going on, speak up about it. And um, don't forget to do your own creative work. And then you reach out to us for any, you know, I have an idea I want to talk about, or there's some people in my community who are trying to pull this together. Um, we really try to stay connected and know what's bubbling up so that we can, we can bring people together. So this is my contact information. That QR code is our, um, our website. So. That's pretty good. I got it all in there before <laughs> Emily has to leave. But I invited a few people here to just talk for a little bit about what it was like to get a grant and um, what's been useful for them. So Emily, if you want to talk. And 
Is she is she gonna be seen on the? Because we have people um, online, virtual visitors. So I work, I'm Emily Peckham. I work for the Points North Institute, which is the parent organization of the Camden International Film Festival, which is how most people know us. Um, we also ran the Shotwell Drive-In for three years during COVID. And um, we also run a, a series of creative residencies for um, filmmakers uh, during the week leading up to SIF. So SIF, the festival, is kind of this coming together of all of the, the things that we do. Um, it's around 1,500 people in attendance. We host the filmmakers coming from uh, who have feature films in the program. Um, so we support their travel. We uh, give them accommodations, ground transport, all of that. Um, we receive funding from the National Endowment for the Arts in addition to uh, corporate sponsors and um, private foundations. Onion Foundation um, supports us. It's interesting to see your list because it's such a finite universe in Maine of organizations that support the arts. And like Davis Family Foundation, for example, just uh, put some more restrictions on their funding. Um, so now you have to take more off time before you can reapply. So uh -huh. we're finding, and we're finding that a lot of organizations that used to fund, not a lot, but some organizations that used to fund a broader uh, section of organizations um, during COVID focused in into like social services and um, taking care of people who were unhomed and, um, uh, you know, food insecure, and they haven't broadened back out again to cover arts. So it feels like there's scarcity in the arts funding in the state in general. Um, so we're super grateful for everything that we do get. Um, it feels really important to be connected, even though we have this kind of global footprint and are, you know, programming films from all over the world and bringing in filmmakers from um, all over the world, really. It, it feels really important to be a part of the Maine ecosystem. You know, we were founded in Camden by a Maine resident, um, a Maine native. Um, we came up through, you know, 20 years. This is our 20th this year. Um, and it just is, it, it feels like it's, you know, mission aligned to be connected to um, our roots here in Maine. Um, we were very grateful when the, um, when Maine Arts Commission um, kind of revamped the grant application um, a couple years ago and um, simplified to a certain extent and opened up to general operations. Um, it's really helpful for a small organization. We're six people year round. I'm the only um, fundraising staffer. Um, it's just really helpful to have, you know, to, to, to not have that be so burdensome. So, um, you know, kind of on, on one end of the scale is like Ford Foundation. Um, and on the other end of the scale for applications are um, places who are trying to do better like Onion Foundation and Maine Arts Commission. So um, surprise, you know, uh, one of the state, <laughs> you know, some uh, that you'd think there would, there would be some bureaucracy in that application process is one of the, one of the best to go through. So um, I've also done the uh, review process. I've participated in that. So they solicit reviewers um, to look at the grant applications from the community, the arts community. Um, it's no small lift, um, but it's really important. So if you get asked to do that, it's helpful to say yes. Um, it's helpful for all of us. Um, and uh, I've also, I was also a part of the um, governing board, the original founding governing board of the main, um, I'm getting all my arts organizations mixed up, the Cultural Alliance of Maine, which is a new nonprofit that's going to help push forward um, initiatives like the sales tax issue, which right. is happening, yeah. it seems like, um, which is I huge. Just saw for Molly us. today. Yeah, Molly and Eccles today, yep. and it sounds yep. like they were up there. Sounds like it's moving. Seems like it's moving. So you know, arts you want organizations. To explain what that, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. I, if you, um, uh, I formerly worked for Hurricane Island uh, Center for Science and Leadership, sales tax exempt nonprofits don't pay sales tax, um, but arts organizations that sell tickets, it has to do with I think that's why pay the sales tax. So 
um, in the end, you know, for our bottom line, it's many tens of thousands of dollars of sales tax that we pay for, you know, things that we buy in the state of Maine. So that getting that exemption broadened to cover um, to cover arts organizations is is going to be it's going to make a big difference to us. It's like it's I think it'll be ultimately like getting an additional you know forty to fifty thousand dollar grant um, that is you know paid for by the taxpayers theoretically, right? So it it's more support from the state, but it does seem like the state has the surplus. Um, so it it feels like we're operating from a, a mentality of, um, of of generosity. So, anyways, that's going to be that's going to make a big difference for a lot of arts organizations. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Emily. Yeah, yeah. I know you have to go. Why don't you just hand it to Richard, right oh. right next to you? Oh, Richard. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm next. Okay. Yeah. I. My name is Richard Chalmers. And I'm a designer and an artist, and I make principally, or what I've been doing for the last couple of years is making artistic tables. And I applied for a springboard grant um, fiscal year 24, and I received that grant. And I'll tell you, it was really um, a boost. I really, it's, the money was really, really helpful. I needed a big piece of machinery that cost a little bit more than a lot of things, and the grant paid for the whole thing. And it wasn't that huge a grant, right? It was like 1500 It was $1,500. Yeah. I mean, that's, and, that's not insignificant. I'm that's not, not that, insignificant. But. It allowed me to buy this piece of machinery outright, and it has really made my production efforts um, more consistent and more accurate and more uniform and a lot less, uh, a lot faster. So it's really been a boost to my production that way and also my creativity because I'm not spending hours and hours and hours sanding wood the way I was before. I just shoot them through the sander and then I can focus on doing something creative. Uh, a couple things I wanted to mention. When I applied last year, I will say that the people um, at the Maine Arts Commission were extremely helpful. They were really, really great. And they, the springboard grant, as I understand it, is for first time applicants. And they really helped me out a lot. You know, they, you just, I just got the feeling they're, they're on my side. They want me to get this grant. And they really helped me fill it out. And that was extremely useful. And another thing that I really liked was the review process. You can watch the review process online after the awards are given, and you can see what people said about your work and that other work. And it's very helpful um, just to see they're talking about the creativity. They also talk about your grant writing process. You know, how was that? So that was really, really helpful. And so helpful, in fact, I applied this year to be on a panelist for the Springboard grant. I haven't heard back on that yet. Mm -hmm. But I think that would be really an interesting process for me. So I think it's a really great program. And I would recommend that anybody out there, if you have any doubts at all, apply. Mm -hmm. And if you need information, call them. They will help you out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Thank you, Richard. You're welcome. And certainly being a reviewer, you get to see what makes a good application and what makes a not great application. And you really can tell after you've read 20, you can really tell what, why one works and what it, one doesn't work. And sometimes it's hard to know that right away, you know, as you're writing. But once you read them, it's a great yeah. way to... Become that's a what, better writer. Better and that's what writer. Eli, I was working with Eli, and he mm -hmm. really helped me out with that. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's like, this guy wants me to get this grant. Yeah, we do. <laughs> so we do. It's of really course nice. we do. Yeah. We do. That was really so nice. You can, yeah, hand that to me. Oh, okay. I've not used microphones before, so. <laughs> um, it works. I received. Um, you are? Oh, I'm Amanda. Um, I'm from Honeybee Hill Pottery, or I am Honeybee Hill Pottery. Um, I moved to Maine in 2017. I had a studio in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, right behind, uh, you know, the shadows of RISD. And um, I 
our, our studio space hosted roughly 50 artists a month. And it was such a wonderful community, um, but I left it behind. And then when I moved here, I thought that I was going to be a soul potter in my tiny studio that I had funded with my own money um, at the back end of my house. And I did not think that I was gonna be teaching anymore. And lo and behold, students sought me out. And eventually, um, adults started finding me. And this woman, Laura, moved here to Maine as a retiree, had no family here, no friends, and was telling me how difficult it was to find community. And she was driving down to Damrascada to do pottery at a wonderful studio there, but was worried about driving in the dark. And all of a sudden, I thought, I need to fix this for her. I know how important the community of artists are, um, the ability to share across fields and ideas, but more importantly, it really just comes down to human connection. Um, how many people really just need to say, my husband was sick for the last month, and there's somebody there that can listen and support them. So we're there for clay, we're there to get dirty, but instead, um, they're finding more than that. That said, after funding my own studio build, I, there's not money left. There's nothing to extend further. And receiving a $2,500 grant enabled me to quadruple the amount, of the amount of students that I serve. And since then, I now have a group of women who call themselves the Clay Tribe. And they are there faithfully every Tuesday. They have helped each other through all sorts of family illnesses and cancers and, and all of this. And it has all stemmed purely from $2,500 that I did not have access to. Um, this has expanded into the youth groups that I teach. Um, I could only teach one student at a time, now I teach four. And the difference between one student with me and four students is all of them talking about their day, their teachers, their eating disorders, their whatever it is. And they're there again under the guise of clay. And all that was needed was an extra wheel and I just couldn't do it. And the thing that was amazing about this grant is coming from Rhode Island, again, the, the shadow of RISD and all of this, grants were something that I wouldn't even begin to approach because you had grant writers. I couldn't hire a grant writer. Mm. And um, I had attended um, oh, the Makers Conference a few years ago at um, the Lookout, Point Lookout, whatever, that's not there anymore. And they had said, there's grants there. We want you to have the money, just contact us. And so finally I thought maybe I should look. And um, the fact that it was so accessible to apply and so um, not intimidating to be able to put in this application and communicate with people that were helping was so appreciated. And like you said, being able to look back at what my evaluation of um, for my grant application made me feel really good because there was somebody who said that ambition seems really high I don't know how she's gonna do it and I remember thinking gosh I hope they read my end-of-year report because I had anticipated that this would help bring sixty five hundred dollars in a year so that I could help pay my my uh, high school interns who want money and I ended up making I think twelve thousand dollars from a twenty five hundred dollar grant so it might seem small to the state, but it was the world of change that I feel um, allowed me to make an impact in the community that I was hoping, so. That's a great story, Amanda. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we just had, like, <laughs> I couldn't have asked you to, uh, present better, that all of those stories were really great. And um, this is an opportunity for people to ask questions if you have any at all. Yeah. Uh, this is a springboard for us. Right. <laughs> it was an artist project grant. Yeah, project grant. 
yeah, just an, yeah, for individual artists, here, let me uh, go back to that uh, screen. For individual artists, so an artist project grant. And I'll just say that all of these are, as they are now, we are constantly evolving how best to do the grants program. So this is how they are right now. Um, we have an individual artist project grant, which is 2,500, springboard is 1,500, and it's, it's just a little bit easier. Um, there's a little less competition because it's only for people who've never gotten a grant from us before. Um, and it, I know that it makes a huge difference to get, to get one of these and then you have a little more confidence about going, going elsewhere. Uh -huh. And that was for the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that disqualify you? Oh, that's a good question. I'll have to ask about that. Um, but yeah, yeah, I know. It's just really one of the um, yeah. Ever since this program. Yeah, we gave out just like a, little bonus on the a lot of five hundred dollars. Yeah, I know. People were so grateful, um, and it was you know. But clearly, when the whole bottom drops out from for people, anything is helpful. But um, I'll see. I'll see. If you let's get your let me get your details, and we'll we'll figure that out. But but either way, the artist project grant is certainly something you could apply for. And the springboard grant is new. We anyone used to just go for just one. We just had the artist project grant, and we wanted to try to figure out how to bring in people who wouldn't ordinarily think that they are eligible for that. Um, so we've got a lot of a lot of people like that who hadn't thought of themselves as in that, you know, meriting a, a, a grant. Good question, yes. Any other questions? Yeah. We, um, we don't, you can apply again. You can apply again. Um, but it is a one year grant. So then you would have to apply again. But I will say that since they're operations, it's sort of, this is what we're doing. This is who we are. This is what we accomplished this last year. That's, and that's the piece that's different, but it's not, um, it shouldn't be a heavy lift is what I'm saying. We try to streamline things so that you provide, you show us your financials as you use them. We don't make you put it into another format. Um, and so we try not to have it be a heavy lift year to year, but it is something that you would have to apply to. We aren't, in at this point anyways, giving these, in these grants, multi-year grants. Yes. Yes. That um, you would apply if you're not a nonprofit. Um, you could apply for an artist project grant as a collective, but it would be under one person's name. But you could, I mean, the whole narrative could be about a collective or a group of artists, but. Um, yeah, the organizations has to be a, either a 501c3 or sponsored by a 501c3. And, you know, that is something that a group of artists could could do as well. It could be. It could be. Yep. 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 It could be a town, um, a tribal government, a school. Mm -hmm. Any questions from? I'm good. I'm, I'm good. Okay. Well, great. Thank you all for coming out. And um, you can get my contact information over there. And I'm going to get yours. And um, I hope to I hope you've learned some things and 
N know that you can always um, connect with us and we can help you think about your next steps. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yay.